Hey, it's Mario here and in this video we're gonna talk gaining muscle and I want to answer one of the most frequently asked questions that I get all the time and that is why am I not gaining muscle mass and this comes from guys all around the world I mean it's usually a company a lot of exclamation marks a lot of question marks guys are just not sure I mean you might be putting a lot of effort but you just don't see the return so in this video I wanted to break down the science I wanted to basically analyze both training and nutrition as well as look into some lifestyle factors that could play a role with you not being able to put on muscle mass. So let's look at training because that's the most important thing aside from nutrition. So with training, I see two extremes here. The one extreme is overtraining, doing too much, and the other extreme is undertraining. So when it comes to overtraining, it's important to understand that overtraining is not a myth. Overtraining exists, overtraining can happen. I mean, your body can only adapt to a certain amount of stress. If you look at the general adaptation syndrome developed by Hans Selye, which is the model we use when we kind of determine the fitness and fatigue levels, and your body has a limited capacity to adapt. It cannot continuously keep adapting. So if you just increase too much of that stress and you don't back off on a certain time, you're just gonna overtrain. It's just, it happens, it is definitely possible. This is not a myth, I mean, a lot of uh, people will say in the bodybuilding world, I mean, we're not sure if they're enhanced or what, what other substances they're using, but overtraining is this, man. If you're a natural lifter, there's definitely your maximum recoverable volume, like you have that. So you wanna make sure to not do and go there. And that's the thing that I wanted to discuss here a little bit. If we look at the research, I mean, there's one really good study from Gonzalez and Badillo 2005 that I actually looked at what happens if you do a little bit too much, what happens if you do a little bit too little, and then they found in that study, the groups that did the moderate amount of volume that found the sweet spot of volume grew a lot more than the group that did too much or the group that did too little. So this study is a very, very fast, and I'm gonna leave the links in the description below. Basically, it says that there's a sweet spot. There's a sweet spot where you're just one step ahead of that overtraining. So you're not allowing your body to basically get overtrained, but at the same time, you're not allowing your body to just rest and chill out. So you're constantly exposing it to stress, but it's not enough stress to cause like a breakdown of the system. And that sweet spot is something you need to find for yourself. So the quote unquote, uh, how many reps and sets I'm gonna be doing, well, that is individual for you. I mean, we have recommendations and I made videos on this in the past, but it's important to understand that there is a limit. And how do you kind of determine this limit? Well, there's something called a rating of perceived exertion, right? So you can actually rate yourself for a single training session, how exerted you feel and how you felt going into the session and exiting the session as well. So let's say it goes from zero to 10. I'm gonna leave this in the description below as well. So let's say zero, you're completely trash. So for that session, you expect not to be able to do good performance. You don't expect to hit any PRs. You're just looking at, okay, I'm just gonna survive this workout. And let's say somewhere between four and six would be kind of, okay, I expect to have similar performance as my last workouts. It's not like a great day, but it's an okay day. And then on the, let's say level 10 of just your recovery scale, let's say you're fully rested, you're expecting to hit PRs, you feel very, very energetic, and you're feeling that you can crush it that day. So basically what I recommend is logging every single workout session, how you feel from zero to 10 using the scale and see if you have too many days in a row. Let's say if you have a whole month of training and all the time you're below five or below six, so you're never fully recovered, you're doing something wrong. You might be doing too much volume and you wanna log this. I mean, a lot of us, uh, we think that we are recovered when we really aren't and we think that we can survive a lot more than we can in the gym. Of course, there's, uh, there's an ability to recover, but are you growing enough? And often I see that people are not putting on muscle mass because they're doing too much and they're doing too much volume. They're going into the session, they're hammering chest for an hour and a half with, with hundreds of repetitions and that muscle group just gets completely destroyed. And as I said, in research we have everything outlined and there is something like doing too much. There is something that will surpass your maximum recoverable uh, volume. And we're not just talking about a single workout session. If you go all out in one workout session, you might be able to go 
uh, you might be able to survive that, but what happens in the next week? What happens in that same week for the next training session, you need to do the same muscle group. So it's not about the volume you do in one single session. It's really about a sustained volume over time that allows you to grow, that allows you to adapt and progress with the amount of weights you're doing, with the amount of reps you're doing. And basically there should be a trend of progression. And now when we talk about progression, we have to talk about the other side of the extreme here, which is under training. And this is, uh, I would say 80% of people in the gym, why they don't see any results? Because they're all under training. I mean, if you end your set, if you're on the last rep of the set, the last repetition of the target, let's say you have 12. And in that 12th rep, if you feel like you could have done five more, if you don't feel like you're fatigued, you're doing something wrong. Your intensity, the amount of weight you're using is just not enough to induce any adaptation. So you're basically wasting your time. So I could take a pink dumbbell, I could do 200 reps with it, I'm not gonna get any adaptation from that. Obviously not, your body is an adaptive mechanism and you need to incorporate progressive tension overload in your training plan in order for you to continue growing because your body will adapt to the amount of weight you're lifting. And if you keep lifting the same weight that you're doing now and two years from now, you're gonna look the same. And if you look at the guys in the gym, most guys look the same year to year because they don't have that progressive overload component. And progressive overload, um, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips here because it's a very tricky subject to talk about it because a lot of guys don't understand that. They think, okay, I need to add 10 kilos or 20 uh, pounds every single week. Well, it's not about that. Progressive overload starts off, let's say, with the amount of weight you can do for the perfect amount of uh, repetitions that, let's say, you don't go to failure, but just one rep shy of failure with great technique, and you start from there. And then from there, you try to progress Let's say you add a little bit more weight and you try to get up to that amount of reps or you try to do uh, that same weight that you could do for the perfect rest for a little bit more reps. Progressive overload first starts off with the full range of motion. Let's say you can't do a full squat. Well, first your progressive overload in that sense is just doing the full squat. And once you can do the full squat, then you can think about adding weight. So it also applies for just even range of motion, it's not just for the amount of weight you're doing, but it also applies for the amount of reps you're doing. So even if the reps are going up, that is still progressive overload. What is progressive overload? Well, it's just doing more over time. It's not specific to just the weight that you're doing, it's also specific to everything else. So if your technique is improving, again, you're in eliciting progressive overload because if you, let's say, have a really shitty squat form and you can barely break parallel, but then all of a sudden you're a little bit more comfortable with that weight and you can break parallel and you feel great and you can squeeze out one extra rep, that's progressive overload. So with a lot of guys in the gym, I mean, I see with this under training uh, syndrome all the time, you know, they finish the set, Pokemon Go, you know, it's like now Pokemon Go, it's Facebook, Instagram, it's Snapchat, it's something. Just can't wait to finish the next set and just go through the motion and just run back home. And that's most people in the gym. So they simply go through the motion, which is okay if you don't care about results. But if you care about results, it is really about challenging yourself with that amount of weight that is gonna put you in that sweet spot of the volume, but also the intensity. Intensity is also important. It's not, as I said, volume is reps times sets times weight. Weight is also an integral component, so it doesn't go without the other. So it's important to find that sweet spot with the amount of weight that is still challenging, but it's not gonna crush you completely, so you end up in the overtraining zone. So find that sweet spot, don't undertrain, but also don't overtrain, and you will go very, very far in terms of training. And these are the two biggest mistakes that I see with guys all the time that said, doing too much, and the second one is not having any progressive overloads, basically doing too little volume and too just under training all the time. So the second uh, big, big reason why you're not gaining muscle mass, so the huge reason, and that I see with a lot of people, is you're just simply too paranoid that you're gonna put on body fat. And this is with across the board, almost 90% of intermediate guys that I talk with, the guys who have been training for let's say a year or two or three years, and they've been, they're kind of strong, you know, they're relatively strong, they, they know how to count macros, they know their diet, they know everything, but they're just too paranoid that they're gonna put on body fat. So the 10 extra grams of body fat, oh fuck no, I need to cut again. You know, they're constantly, 
cutting there, non-stop in a caloric deficit, and you cannot maximize muscle growth in a caloric deficit. That just doesn't happen. And also, you cannot maximize strength adaptations as well. I mean, you can get stronger, and you probably are building muscle mass if you are, let's say, having a really great training program and you're progressing with weights, but it's not gonna be as fast as if you were actually feeding your body enough. And even with this, same as with training, there's a sweet spot. So I'm not saying that you just go YOLO, you know, let's thousand calories extra every day, you know, let's wake up in the middle of the night, eat sandwiches and peanut butter. It's, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that there's a sweet spot where you give your body the permission to grow. And that permission is just enough calories for you to build muscle, but not too many calories for you where you're gonna start storing too much body fat. And that sweet spot is actually quite easy to find, but a lot of people are just, well, I'm bulky now, and they just get into that mindset. Well, avoid that mindset. Don't do any kind of dirty bulks or anything like that. Give yourself enough good nutrition, and then you will see great results. So how do you find a sweet spot? Well, number one thing, as always, same as when it comes to the dieting to lose body fat, same when it comes is to gain muscle mass. You first determine your caloric maintenance. So what is the amount of calories that I consume that will maintain my current weight? So you have that uh, calorie equilibrium. So basically the amount of calories coming in and the amount of calories coming out is kind of resulting in the same body weight. Now when you're at that point, you want to look at your training experience. So let's say you've been a guy who's lifting for a year, you can expect to be putting on, let's say a pound of muscle per month. So that, that's an, a realistic expectation. That's a starting point. If you've been lifting for two or three years, it's probably gonna be a, like a half a pound, right? And now that you have that figure, you basically, okay, how much calorie do I need to put in to build that much muscle per month? And to synthesize about a pound of muscle, a starting point is about 3,500 calories. And now you basically need to spread out 3,500 calories across a month. How much does that come out to? Well, it's gonna be about 110 extra calories above your maintenance per day as a starting point. And this is what is called lean gaining or very slow and controlled bulking. A lot of people think it's uh, some kind of huge number of calories they need to eat. It might be the case, I'm saying this is a starting point, if you're not seeing any progress, if you're not seeing any mass gains, then you have to double this amount of calories. So instead of going 100, uh, per day, you go to 200 per day. If again, you're not noticing any progress, then you go to 300 a day extra, right? So you basically start off with that minimum amount, which is again, playing into the whole idea that we're all paranoid about gaining body fat, but it, it's gonna allow you to control your body fat level because you're gonna be training hard and all of those extra calories, that little bit of extra 100 calories will go into muscle gains. Then afterwards, if that's not fast for you, if that's really not resulting in a pound per month, then sure, let's add a little bit more. It's always easier to add. So that's the uh, controlled slow bulk, which will allow you to build muscle, but at the same time, it's important to understand, I mean, you will gain some body fat. It's never gonna be zero body fat. It's just not how it works. You have to, spend a decent amount of time in that caloric surplus, that, that small caloric surplus in order for you to maximize muscle gains. It takes a little bit of that momentum to maximize muscle growth. It just doesn't happen overnight. I mean, guys are like, well, I've been on this uh, bulk for two weeks and I haven't gained any muscle. Well, look, I mean, it takes a while. You've probably been in a deficit for two years and now all of a sudden you're thinking that your body is just gonna magically switch into a surplus. It doesn't work like that. It's more like a general trend. So the longer you stay in that maintenance, that really slow bulk kind of calorie intake, the easier it's gonna to be to synthesize muscle mass and you're also gonna feel pretty damn good because you're no longer in a deficit. So <laughs> look forward for that. So um, that is in terms of nutrition. It's simply coming down to the amount of calories you're putting in. Obviously, I'm assuming that your protein intake is adequate, so make sure you're on top of that, as well as that your diet is very, very nutritious, so it's not missing out any uh, key nutrients. You're not consuming most of your food from processed sources. You're basically eating 90% of whole, healthy, unprocessed foods, which is my recommendation here, is that if you wanna basically build muscle, you need to give your body quality fuel. You need to give the building blocks, which is high protein, but as well as a nutritious, 
healthy diet rich with vegetables fruits and a variety of different carbohydrate sources and fat sources and protein sources variety is key and that will give your body the building blocks it's necessary for you to build that muscle mass so um, the final factor here is lifestyle and recovery and a big part of this is sleep there's been a study from brazil 2011 basically looked at what happens if you sleep deprived people what are the effects on muscle protein synthesis and it was reduced like across the board reduction in muscle protein synthesis meaning less muscle is being built and when less muscle is being built basically you're not sleeping enough where are those excess calories gonna go well they're gonna be stored as body fat because when you don't sleep we know that mechanisms that are basically uh, partitioning your calories whether they're gonna go into fat or muscle are completely screwed up so you're gonna be gaining a lot more body fat than muscle mass and that's a big problem not just when you're let's say when you're bulking but even if you're dieting let's say you're dieting down it, at the same time you're going to be losing a lot more muscle mass than fat mass if you're not sleeping enough so sleep is a huge huge thing here i would recommend at least eight hours of sleep at least that that would be a minimum a, a minimum starting point i would recommend in terms of sleep that will allow you to manage yourself additionally depending on how stressful your life is you want to make sure to, to find a sustainable workout plan where you can actually go to the gym and focus on gym and this is a huge thing with building muscle because if your lifestyle is just so hectic you're constantly under stress and you're trying to squeeze in that workout you're lucky if you're maintaining you're, you're seriously lucky if you're maintaining muscle mass if i'm traveling when i'm so much under stress I could barely maintain and that, that's how stressful it gets sometimes for some certain weeks in the in the year so if you're having a really stressful lifestyle make sure to really tailor a little bit of your workout plan maybe go from like training four or five times a week to three times a week if that will allow you to recover more because it really comes down to your recovery ability you can hammer yourself in the gym really really hard but if you're not able to recover until the next time you hit the gym you're not going to be able to, to repeat that same performance and not even that you want to especially you're not going to be able to increase that performance so it's important to find a sustainable uh, workout plan that you can hit the gym with and also progress over time so if you are doing too much work and if you are doing too much volume why not just go back to three days a week per gym training training and then progressive overload component is there and you keep adding weight over time and that will fit your lifestyle a bit more so there's nothing wrong with that you know three full body sessions per week can get you great results even if you've been training for years and it's plenty of time in the gym to uh, progress and it's plenty of time to get in the volume that you need and the frequency is quite good with three full body sessions per week so um, those will be the most important factors here as i mentioned with the training with the diet and the lifestyle factors that could be hindering your muscle growth i mean there's countless other factors that could play a role here but these are the main ones that i see holding guys back all around the world i mean I, I constantly keep repeating this and i hope this was helpful all this is backed by research i'm going to leave the research studies in the description below for you nerdy guys that want to dig deeper into it and want to read the full papers be my guest i love to read that stuff as well myself so uh, that's basically how i got all my knowledge so Aside from that, I'm curious in the comments below, are you currently in a phase where you just don't feel like you're gaining muscle? And on top of this, I mean, as I said, leave that in comments below, but I wanna mention a final note here is that you wanna be measuring your progress. And this is something that I almost forgot, which is super, super key because I see a lot of guys in the gym, they're uh, basically going to the gym and they're saying, oh, I'm not getting any size, man. I'm not progressing. I'm not getting any muscle. I'm not doing anything. In reality they are actually gaining a lot of muscle mass they're just not gaining that much that it, so it's visible because they're looking at themselves every single day you don't notice the difference but if you if you tell them hey man just take a picture like progress photo take your weight measurements take your tape measurements and do the same thing a month from there you're gonna see huge gains and any like I told this to many guys and about 50% of the guys that were kind of saying, well, I'm not gaining any muscle mass. They were actually putting on a lot of muscle mass, but they weren't even aware of it. So a lot of people are not measuring their progress. And that's kind of silly to kind of have to repeat it, but it's true. I mean, a lot of people, even myself, you know, for the first year or two of training, I was like, oh, I don't bother with writing down which weights I'm using in the gym or anything like that. I'm going to remember all of that. Well, look, man, like you're not going to remember 
like two two weeks ago what you did on a leg curl for like 15 reps sets you know there's no way you're gonna remember that and even if you are i mean you could spend that mental energy on doing something else as, as well as keeping track of all your measurements i mean we are very very subjective we cannot see if our bicep increased for like half a centimeter or something like that. So it's important to measure your progress as well. With all these points in mind, if you're measuring your progress, you will notice gains for sure. If you're getting stronger, if you're getting that sweet spot of volume, getting enough calories, getting enough recovery, it's inevitable. You will grow muscle mass. So hope you enjoy, as I said, uh, hit me up in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button as well to support the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.